In this video you will learn what is React Query and why does it make a lot of sense to use this library inside your React project. So the first question is what is React Query and as you can see here I am inside official website React Query and actually the website is stanstackcom slash query and here we have a library of version 4 which actually means inside Tenstack we have several libraries, it is not only query, we also have here table, router, charts and so on. But for now we are interested in query. And actually here is everything that you need to know. React query is a missing piece to implement fetching and caching and synchronization of our data inside React. What does it ever mean? Typically inside our application we have something like this. We have just a component and inside we have some state. Then inside use effect on initialize we are fetching some data like for example users from API and then we set them inside our state. After this later, for example after creating of the user, we can update this state. This is totally fine and this is the code that we are writing inside React out of the box. What is the problem? Actually we are using use effect and use state everywhere just to get some server data and then put them inside state. And then every single time we are updating this state. And what library React Query does, it simply makes it by itself. As you can see here in the example, we have our component example and we are using here use query from this library. And here we simply have a fetch which is a promise and we are getting here three local properties, is loading, error and data. And we can directly use this data inside the component, which actually means we are eliminating the whole logic that we must write every single time when we are fetching something and putting it in the state. Because at some point you want to invalidate that state, you want to update it or synchronize. It takes effort. And if you still are not sure what is React Query, you might think about it as for example Apollo Client if you know it, or maybe inside Redux we have Redux Toolkit with it Redux Toolkit Query. This is exactly the same idea, but here you don't have a Redux. This is why now let's look on the real example and try to refactor it inside React Query. And as you can see this is exactly our example. We have here a list of users from the API. We have 9 users, we can type something here and hit add user and we are getting here the 10th user inside our list. Which actually means we have two real requests get users and create user and we are updating our state. This is exactly what you saw in this component. We have here user state and we are updating it on add user. So now let's refactor this component with using of React Query. And first of all we must jump to the console and install two packages. So first of all here I will install the package which is called 10 stack slash React Query. And as you can see, this is the namespace 10 stack, just like you saw on the website. Another package that we want to install is called React Query DevTools, and it will help us tremendously to debug our requests. Our next step here will be to correctly initialize our React Query. And for this we must jump inside our index.js and here on the top I want to import first of all query client and as you can see it is coming from 10 stack react query and also we need here query client provider. And additionally here I want to import from another package react query devtools from 10 stack react query devtools. Now as you can see here we have our application and we must wrap the whole application with query client provider and inside we are providing a client. So what is client? We must create it beforehand. This is why here let's create a query client and we simply create it by calling new query client that we got from the library. Now inside the client property we must provide our query client and let's close our query client provider. Now we must put our app inside query client and after our app we can also render our React query devtools which is just a component. And inside here I want to provide initial is open property because by default I want to see it open. So this is the whole configuration that we must do in order to use React Query. Now we can jump back inside our users chess and change our component. First of all here we have use effect and inside we are fetching users data. Now we can use it differently. 
Here on the top I want to import use query and as you can see we are getting it from React query. Now here we don't need users anymore, I will comment it out and we can write here use query that we just imported and inside we are providing an array with just a single key users. And after this as a second parameter we are writing get users. So what is get users function? As you can see here we used it previously inside our use effect to fetch data, which actually means get users is simply a promise to get data from the API. Let's check this out. Here is API.js and here is our function get users and we are using here Axios to simply fetch data from our API. Which actually means inside your query function we are writing first of all an array of different values. And this is exactly the path that we want to cache and you will see it in a second. And get users is our promise. And what we are getting back from this hook, some options that we want to destructure. And actually here we are interested in data property. And I want to map this property directly to users and default it to empty array. Why is that? Because on initialize this data will be undefined and actually our component can't work with undefined users, we need here an empty array. Which actually means with this single liner we will fetch on initialize our users and then update the whole component. And we don't need this code anymore and we don't need use effect here. But as you can see here we still have a problem inside our add user function. This is why for now I will comment out complete create user because we will change it later. Let's check if it's working. I don't have any errors here, just warnings regarding use effect and create user. This is totally fine. I will just reload the page and this is how it looks like. As you can see here, the whole screen is black and we see here users. And actually this is DevTools from React Query. So what this DevTools is about is exactly what we fetched and what is cached. And as you can see here on the left, we see an array of users and we can click here. And actually this is our query users that we got and this is our data that we got from the backend. And here on the top we have some actions, we can for example refetch them or invalidate or remove and so on. But for now I just want to close DevTools and open network because actually I want to see that our request is going to the API. I will reload the page and here is our request users on localhost 3004 slash users. And here in the response we are getting an array of our users. And this is exactly these users that we are rendering on the screen. Which actually means instead of writing use effect and managing state on our own, we directly leverage this library to implement getting data, caching this data and updating our state. And obviously here additionally we are getting is loading property and error property, but we are not using them inside our component. Now we must implement creating of our user and for sure we want to use React Query for this. This is why here on the top I will import use mutation. And actually additionally we also need now here use query client. What we want to do now here on the top, we want to create create user mutation. And actually it will be just a function to call our API. This is why here let's name it create user mutation and for this we want to call use mutation function where inside we are providing our function with the promise this is create user it is coming from our API and secondly an object with on success property. And actually this is the callback of successful creation and later we can implement something here. For now I will simply write console log on success. So we got this create user mutation and now what we want to do inside our add user function, we can simply call create user mutation dot mutate and we are providing inside the value that must go inside our promise. And as you can see here previously it was our input value. So this is the single liner, we don't need to do anything else. So we can completely remove this code because we are not managing the state by ourselves. Now let's check if it's working. I will open here our network and here I want to type something and hit add user. As you can see here we don't see this user on the screen but inside our network we have our request. And actually this is our request post, we can see that this is a post on slash users and here is our payload, this is correct and here is the response from the backend. Which actually means our API was called and we successfully created a user with just this single liner. 
So this is exactly how you do a post request inside React Query. But now the question is why our state was not updated. Because actually mutations does not update our state. And just to remind you here is DevTools and we see our users. And this users is exactly our list and it was cached by URL. By what URL it was slash users. And actually our mutation is not changing this cached data. And what is the solution for this? We must invalidate our list and refetch it on success. But for this we must have access to the query client. This is why we imported here use query client. So here I want to create a property query client and we are using here use query client to get access to it. Now here inside on success we can simply write query client dot invalidate queries and we are using it to remove some data from our queries which were cached. In this case here we are providing an array and inside we are providing users. This is exactly what we want to invalidate. Let's check if it's working. I am typing here a new user and I am hitting add. And as you can see we are getting this user at the end of our list. And essentially here inside the network, when we are typing a user and we are hitting add user, several things are happening. First of all here we have a post request on slash users and after this we have a get request because we refetched our list of data from the backend after we made a creation. This is exactly this invalidation of the query. So as you can see the main goal of React Query is that we stop to synchronize backend server data with our client state Plus we are getting caching and invalidation, everything that we need out of the box. And actually if you are interested to know how we can use exactly the same approach inside Redux Toolkit when we are using Redux Toolkit Query, make sure to check this video also.